How's it going, everyone? Welcome to this week's episode of Two Nerds, a podcast. I'm Buddy the Bruiser Candela, and... I'm Dynamite Jared Latchy. Cutting me off there early on. Early on in the episode, cutting me off. That's okay, That's, though. I'm notorious for cutting people off. I can't wait for our first legitimate interview, so I can just start cutting the fuck out of Well, I don't know. Our people. first legitimate interview, you might not even be allowed in the fucking I, room. I might not be allowed in the room, but... Uh, His people have been talking to my people, and he's really excited about being on the show <laughs> as long as you're nowhere. As long as I'm not in the, in the area. Of course, we're referring to the... Mr. Block. As Mr. I'm... Block, the, uh, the world-famous uh, frontman for uh, original hardcore band Blind Hate. First ever hardcore band. First ever hate core band, we'll say. Since I don't think that they predated like minor threat or suicidal tendencies or stuff like that, but they definitely started in eighty two. So <laughs> Hell of a year. Yeah. Nineteen eighty two. It's so funny. It's <laughs> blind hate, but it's like a debut LP. <laughs> Or a debut demo, actually, in debut 1982. Demo. Yeah, yeah. Blind Hate, The Lost Tapes. Yeah. The Lost Tapes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so we are here live um, in the Dynamite Palace, after hours of the Dynamite Palace. So I think this, this, ep- yeah. this episode is probably the latest we've ever recorded. We're starting- and it's coming to you late, too. It's, it's coming to dropping- you late. Dropping it's, it's tomorrow. It's dropping late. We're recording this Saturday night. When, when, when you it wake was supposed up, to be, it was supposed to be oot already. Supposed to be oot? Yeah. <laughs> supposed to be oot. Um, but yeah, this week has been hell of a week for me. Uh, we just wrapped production on the film I was working on called My Friend Dahmer. Actually just got back from the rap party, um, which I left early to come do this podcast. Do they do a lot of rapping do they do the a rap lot of party. Like, is there any freestyling? You know, I left. I've never been I, to a rap party before. I will take you. I they I had a plus one, but you were at work. I had a plus one. Could have taken you. Hey man, you were at the J. I'm just dude. throwing my shoulder. If you've ever seen the meme of that, like uh, whatever that thing is, it's uh, like the taxidermy, and it's like that albino thing, and it has its arms thrown. Oh, in I know the what air. you're talking about. I don't know what the hell it is, but that's what I'm doing right now. The like, fucking like Mozart or Beethoven. Yeah, the, freaking. You know, whatever the hell it is. I want to go to a rap party. That's messed up. And you know what? I guarantee. That there are hot girls at this rap party. <laughs> Buddy is uh, no a ta- comment. Buddy's a taken man. He can't comment on the attractiveness level of I was the actually, females at I was, the rap party. I was on the phone with my girlfriend on the way back from the rap party, and I told her about how the waitress was complimenting my cell phone. And I was like, nah, she is ugly. You got nothing to worry about. But Does your girlfriend listen to the podcast? Probably not. So, full disclosure, on the podcast on the airwaves, <laughs> was she actually hot? No. She was not No, hot. I was honest, man. All right. <laughs> don't lie to your girlfriend. That's a whole can of worms you don't <laughs> want to get into. Uh, yeah, so just trouble. got back. Um, probably a couple people from the crew might potentially be listening to this um, at some point. Some word of um, mouth advertising. Some word, some word of mouth. Ma- Andy Sheff is probably listening right now. He tried listening in his hotel room, um, but apparently the internet was trash. So, so he, who's Andy Shep? Let's... Andy Shep is the uh, the first assistant director of the okay. film. Uh, likes to jerk off hamsters a lot. Jerk from, off hamsters. From what I've heard. All right. Yeah. That's a unique hobby, but uh, we we don't judge here on Two Nerds We, we do not judge. We only we, judge we, movies. We yeah. judge movies. We don't we judge. Ju- we're we're nerdy as fuck. So if you're into <laughs> fucking jerking hamsters or whatever you're into, I mean, just do you, man. I'm into some weird shit, you know. We won't get into. We won't get into. I don't want to lose any listeners. We've been losing. steadily losing listeners each yeah, week. I think I think it's mainly because we haven't been posting them on Facebook. We kind of stopped after like the first or second. I know at least I stopped after the first episode. So we're lazy. We, we got to get on our social media game. Yeah. Well, you um, know, I refuse to get on to my social media game since, you know, I'm not gaining any followers. Go here. follow Jared. I, I actually gained a couple followers. What the not, fuck? I don't, it's not from that. I gained a couple followers because last night I posted some photos um, with the star of the movie, Ross Lynch. So a couple of his. I saw that. His fans are. An attractive, fo- attractive looking young man. 
Yeah. And here's the thing. So, uh, so Ro- Ross, if you're out there, Jared thinks you're an attractive young man, apparently. And so do all these girls. Okay. And all these girls were posting the photo that I posted. Like they took my shit and put it on their Instagram and shit. And they said, oh, he's such a cutie. So I took like probably like 10 or 15 minutes. And they just going to all their photos that they sold. And it's like, yeah, I know I am. Thanks. And then they were even fucking post like they took screenshots of my comments and were posting them too. So this is the star of the movie. Yes. Okay. And how I saw that he's verified because I actually he saw that ver- you tagged him. He's a him. Disney Channel guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So he is big time. And Buddy Candela took a picture of him. Buddy the Bruiser. We're bros, dude. Uh, yeah. I mean, the whole crew was pretty tight. Um, yeah. I mean, we're all gonna still talk after this. So. Movie comes out. That's what some, they. That's what some, they, that's told what they you. all. That's what that's they what all they say. Told you. That's what they say. Um, You're gonna be sliding into Ross Lynch's DMs here in a couple <laughs> weeks. Like, hey, do you know any people? And he's just gonna be like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> I got Disney Channel stuff to do. So, anyways. Anyways. You're saying, can we know. go back to I, the rat party? Is it over? Or? Uh, it'll be over by the tom- time we're done here because our shit. Son of a bitch. We usually roll for about an hour and a half, so you fucking know. Um, that shit's gonna be long. I think long we could cut this episode short because we have drive no back, material. Drive back out to Cleveland. Yeah, I go think, to this rap party. I think we'll get. Look, I'm just trying to get some Twitter followers. Just trying to get some follow. Go follow yeah. Jared. Um, follow me too, I guess. All you fangirls out there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, we might talk more about the film as he knows Ross Lynch. I do. So if you guys ever need to get a hold of Ross, people have already asked me for his phone number, and I can't do that. So. <laughs> do you have but his phone number? Can neither <laughs> confirm or deny whether or not I do. Um, but anyway, we might talk about more about the film once it gets released, or there's more information about that. Um, it was a good time. Glad I did it. Um, yeah, it was awesome. Um, this week, uh, we don't really have anything to talk about, so we're wrapping this up already. Wrapping this up. We'll see Thanks you guys. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah, so anyways, buddy, I asked you earlier. You've had some time to think about it. So before we dive in first, head first, what is your all-time favorite sex scene? Jared asked me this and fucking like you don't realize how many sex scenes you've seen until until someone, someone so, just comes up to you and asks you and you would think that this I, I thought about this today too and it was a tougher question than it really seems and it's like you would think that this is something guys talk about all the time but it's really not it's really not I, I'm i wondering why it's not I mean <laughs> like I talk about porn and stuff with my friends all the time but i don't think we've ever talked about porn well not me and you it's just not something that we would talk with listen we seem like really good friends on the podcast and everything but once the mics are turned off me and buddy just don't say another word to each other he walks out to his car we might talk a little bit about like what we're doing next week or whatever and then we just go back to hating each other this is strictly business strictly business so when we talk we just talk business so anyways, you've had, you've had, um, I think going on 15 minutes now to think about your favorite sex scene of all time. Cat, I'm still going with my initial thought with the room has got to be the best sex scene ever put to film. So good that they showed it twice in the film. <laughs> so good. They had to recycle it. It was too good not to use twice. <laughs> so. Oh man, I'm not even gonna say what I have to say about this because so many people, so many people will try and kill me. Jared hasn't seen the Don't room. So Jared has not seen the room. All right, so I haven't seen the room yet. I've been planning to for a very long time, but this is a movie you need to watch with someone else. This is a movie they don't do it anymore. Um, at least not as frequently, but this is a movie you need to go and see with a group of I people. I wanted to go see it one me, time. Me and I Ricky saw a went screening, to see it. and Ricky said he didn't want to go. Me and Ricky went. I we, mean, I'm sure they've done multiple screenings well, yeah, in done, Cleveland. I'm, done, I think I asked him after you guys went. Oh, to one of them, yeah. Yeah, so you need to, to go see it to believe it, I guess, but... Yeah, even like, I know of it. I know of you're tearing me apart, Lisa. And, yeah, and uh, some famous. Oh, hi, Mark. And well, hi, yeah, Mark. Uh, hi, doggy, or whatever, and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. I know that we, shit, but 
But yeah, so, next time there's a big group of us and we're like, we don't have fucking shit to do. We'll watch the goddamn room. All right. Yeah. Um, sounds good. Ricky says it's not as good. Oh, it's 1000% overhyped. 1000%. Right. But if you're with the right group of people, it's good. This is a movie you never want to watch by yourself because you're just going to want to That's what I'm your, saying. I don't like, want to just download Tommy Wiseau's The Room and just start going at it. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> And by going at it, I mean jerking off. Like I don't to, want to the recycled to, sex scene. Yeah, I don't want to be there. There's actually I don't want to be caught. You know what I mean? So like, this is another thing with sex scenes. Is like, I don't want to get caught. Like if somebody just so happens to walk into my room, I don't want to get caught jerking off. And it's like, what are you watching? You know, what are you watching? <laughs> what are you watching? Watching, the watching the goddamn room. watching the room. <laughs> Is, is this the first or the second time they showed the sex scene? Well, there's multiple. Second time. There's, there's multiple sex scenes in this movie with multiple different people, but there's one scene that they recycle. So, what is 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 this an erotic thriller then? Essentially, it was meant to be an erotic film drama. Basically, here's my theory, and the nostalgia critic backs this up. Tommy Wiseau was just shooting a porn with his girlfriend in his fucking house. And someone walked in and was like, oh, what are you doing? He's like, oh, independent movie. <laughs> and then they just had to fucking shoot a movie around this sex scene they did. Because <laughs> it's so fucking bad, you would believe that they had no idea what they were doing making this movie. Oh, my God. So, But anyway, so that's my favorite sex scene. Just favorite sex scene of all time. I think I discussed this on the podcast before. My favorite sex scene of all time, Terminator 1. Terminator 1. Ter- Terminator 1. So, uh, just no, under the blankets, snuggling, Under huggling. the blankets, some, just some nice, passionate <laughs> lovemaking. All the meanwhile with a cybernetic assassin from the future trying to track him down. Played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's my favorite sex scene of all time because when I think of sex scenes, just that's just the one that just pops into my head. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, the fact that we're even talking about sex scenes, and sex is probably going to be in the title of this video, because it's one of our topics. Listen, so we, buddy, so, we've so been we're, lo- we're going to get hits from this. Exactly. That's why we're talking about sex scenes today. You think that you think so, that so I have so- no business acumen, my friend, <laughs> but we've been losing viewers for quite some time now. <laughs> our, our viewership and our downloads have been declining with each episode, and sex sells. I'm sex sitting here sells. thinking, how can we get these viewers back? Sex, my friend. Sex. So, sex scenes. We've talked about the Terminator. How about the Chase, starring Charlie Sheen? Have you seen the Chase? I have not Charlie? seen the Chase, but you can tell me all about the sex. Scene. Well, I mean, it's it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy right now, but I mean, this is a movie starring Charlie Sheen, which um, the. It's been so long since I've seen it. The female lead is probably some big name actress too, and um, they're being chased. He, she, he's kidnapped her, and they're being chased this whole movie on the freeway or whatever by by the police. Somewhere along the line during this chase, they're gonna fall in love, and wouldn't you know it? You know she's riding the stick shift while. <laughs> <laughs> While he's uh, going down the freeway there. So, you can see the police, the sirens and shit behind them and everything. So during a car chase scene, probably one of the most interesting sex scenes in mainstream. Mainstream. So this is a mainstream film. This is mainstream. This is when Charlie Sheen. So certainly not lost on VHS. Not lost on VHS (laughs) whatsoever. There's definitely a DVD release of the chase. I've reached out. To people. Reached out to some people? I've reached out to some people to find out some of their favorite sex scenes of all time. Yeah. You have any guesses besides what I've told you earlier? Besides what I've told... No, not... Besides I think I wrote I, down everything. I think I was saying it as I wrote them down. Well, you were, you were saying them as you wrote them down, but you didn't disclose who was suggesting Well, some these. of them were on Twitter. Some were on Twitter. And so you saw. And um, speaking, speaking... We got some fucked up answers on Twitter. Some um, fucked up answers on Yeah, Twitter. one of our friends um, said, every sex scene in a Serbian film. Yeah? One of our friends. One of our friends. He's pretty fucked up. I mean, he's probably better friends with you than he is with me. Oh. Which says a lot about the people that you hang out with. Oh, my. So, Serbian film, for those of you who don't know, is an extreme 
I don't know how to describe it. Have you seen it? I have. I have not seen it. And I believe I've seen the edited version. Like the. There's the, a, there's the, an unrated and a, and oh, a rated okay. version. I got you. I got you. And um, I don't know if it meant like there was like a Serbian actual release and an American like different versions. No, it's of all the film. Serbian, I believe. Yeah. Um, it's all subbed and everything. Uh, this movie is about a porn star who's retired, but um, these people interview him for a job. They want him to do one last film for a huge amount of money. I can't remember how much, but it's so much money. He can't turn it down. So one more role. And, um, it sounds like every Schwarzenegger movie from the eighties only with porn instead of, yeah, you got to come back to the forest. <laughs> so except for Terminator. Um, and so he takes the thing on, but you know, every sex scene they want him to do is just so fucked up. They just want him to do super fucked up things. And, like, eventually, like, he doesn't want to do it. And they start having to take him against his will and everything. I don't want to go into graphic detail. If you're into some fucked up stuff, which I'm into, <laughs> I, I actually thought it was a good movie. Believe it or not. Like, not, you know, because of the content, you know, which is absolutely repulsive. But um, it's actually well made. And it's interesting. It is well made. Is it well made? Yeah, it's well made. Well shot. Well directed. See, because I've always assumed, like to this point, that it was like independent, like really shittily done. But now that you're saying it's actually it was good, it was good. But production it's... values are high. Production values are pretty good. You know what I mean? Like, it's still not a Hollywood film or anything. Right. But, right. You know, so Serbian film. Is uh, someone someone out there? I just I looked. Assume... I, I looked on Twitter just now on your tweet to see who it was. So that's the thing. I'm pretty sure he wasn't serious. No, but... he was he was joking. But I'm sure there's people out there that that's literally their favorite fucking sex I'm scene sure of all is. time is in a Serbian film, a <laughs> baby rape scene. But um, um so anyway, so anyways, um, here's a good one. Conan the Barbarian. Cat, this so, fucking sex scene. So there's multiple sex scenes in this movie, but, but the infamous one. With so the there's snake. the infamous one where <laughs> Arnold bones this chick, she turns into a snake, and he says, fuck you, and throws her into the fire. Lady, turning into a snake was not a good idea after you had sex with Conan the Barbarian, as portrayed by Arnold Schwarzenegger. I just I just remembered another sex scene that we haven't talked about. I'm pretty sure. Isn't there a sex scene in one of the Deathstalker films where he's fucking her and it turns into a guy? Is that in Deathstalker? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't watched Deathstalker yet. Cat. I have all four of them. Lost and I on VHS. Them. Oh, man. Ha- Do those not have DVD? There's no fucking way that Deathstalker's on DVD. Oh, come on, bro. I don't know. Um, so... <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. Um... So that leads me to another thing that um, action movies see like a lot of people like, you know, kind of like the horror movie sex scenes. They're kind of goofy, man. I get particularly excited over action movie sex. Well, you've got a whole VHS section of erotic thrillers. (laughs) No, I'm thinking about making one because I got some, but I do have a few erotic thrillers, but it just seems to me like when you're watching an action movie and the main protagonist gets it, you know what I mean? And depending on who the actor is, like if this is like a big name actor, you feel like you know him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're you behind feel, him. You, yeah. Yeah. You're happy for him. You know what I mean? Um, Van Damme, that guy gets laid a lot. Yeah. And um, nowhere to run. He has a sex scene with, um, some some girl he's living in her barn or whatever and you know she's dating the sheriff who's actually like working with some guy that's like trying to buy their land trying mm-hmm. to buy all the land in this little town or whatever it's it's not that good but van damme you better believe van damme starts banging this girl <laughs> um so you know i get particularly excited when somebody like Van Damme or Schwarzenegger or someone gets their fucking shag on, 
because these are my dudes. You know what I mean? Uh, how about Stallone in Rocky One? <laughs> Doesn't get too graphic. There's no nudity or anything, but you know, you know what's happening yeah. there. You know what I mean? And it's just like it's hard. It's hard not to root Stallone on when he brings Adrian home. I think they get into a fight or something, but then they end up smashing. I, I, you know how long it's been since I've seen Rocky One. This should stick in your heart. It should in your stick. Mind. If I, I was probably like five when I watched it. Maybe Whew. I don't fucking know, dude. Watched Rocky Four a shit ton, but. So how about his sex scene in the Italian Stallion, though? Haven't seen it. <laughs> I haven't I, either. I covered a shift. Because I used to work at a family video. I covered a shift at a different store, and they fucking had that in their porn section. I think that it's something that we need to watch at the some Italians point. Do a full... Yeah, do a full, full episode. Full commentary track on the Italian Stalin. So, um... One good sex scene. And here's a big-time movie. And this is what concerns me about sex scenes that I like, right? Yeah. Is that a lot of the time it's the guy that's in it. That's like, and not like getting me excited in like a, like a homosexual way. You're excited for your dude to get laid. I'm just excited that this guy is going to be banging. You know what I mean? Like he's going to be smacking, smashing someone. So we have right here, American psycho (laughs) Christian Bale. And I mean, look, man, I'm straight as an arrow. Not that there's anything wrong with being otherwise. Christian Bale looks good in this movie. He's hot in this movie. Do you do you not agree? Well, you, you, Christian Bale is an attractive man in that movie. <laughs> Listen, a lot of partial nudity from Christian Bale in this movie. Now, I'm not saying I got a chub or anything from this, but I'm I I can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> if I was blushing a lot while watching this movie. I'll give you blush. You might see like me getting like really red in the face when Christian Bale starts doing stuff, but. So in American Psycho, there's really no reason to get excited about the girls that he bangs. Because if you remember, the girls that he bangs in this are girls that I would bang in real life. But not if I was Christian Bale. Solid six out of (laughs) ten. Maybe a six. You know what I mean? But Christian Bale picks up the, the hooker or whatever. I can't remember if the other girl's hot or not. I just always remember that the hooker kind of, she's not, she's not that great. Especially by Christian Bale, by, American yeah. Psycho standards. But the thing about this sex scene that's so great is that Christian Bale doesn't even care about the girls that he's banging. He's just like yeah, kind of he's just, he's just checking himself out in the mirror and he's flexing. Classic scene. One of the that's I mean, one of the all time greatest scenes and one of the all time greatest lines is when he's talking about Phil Collins <laughs> and he stops and he's like. Don't just stare at it. Eat it. (laughs) In reference to the other girl's ass, of course. So we got a... Somebody said their favorite sex scene of all time is in Titanic. Yeah, we did. Our our faithful producer. (laughs) (laughs) He's a weird one. Jake Hill coming at us. Producer. Intro. uh, The writer of our intro. Of our theme song. So, uh, <laughs> favorite sex scenes, Titanic. I mean, that's another classic scene. I, have you seen Titanic? Were you saying you haven't seen Titanic? I mean, I can neither confirm nor deny that you have seen Titanic. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I've seen parts, but you haven't seen the, the famous clip from Titanic with the fogged up car. And then the, the hand hits the window. This is, this is the sex scene. This is the sex scene. Yeah. That's not enough. It's sex. very, it's very tastefully done. <laughs> and Titanic for all the, all the moms out there. <laughs> tastefully done. I asked, I asked Bert. And she says, I asked her what her favorite sex scene of all time was. And she's like, Oh, like the really classy ones. Are you, do you mean like the classy ones from films? Because I like everything in, um, What's the name of that movie? Uh, You're the one that was interviewing people, taking the notes. I'm man. taking all the notes. Where's, where's this at? It's she's okay. So she's like like the classy ones. And then she goes on to say that like the ones from Nymphomaniac. Or like, 
<laughs> really classy. Some good. <laughs> Those are some sex scenes shot with some fucking class. <laughs> and nymphomaniac. Um, here's some concerning information is I asked my ex-girlfriend oh, yeah. what her favorite sex scene was. And um, she gave me a toe tag pictures movie by the name of Mask Head. She said any anything from Mask Head. So for those of the, you who don't know. Including myself. <laughs> what Mask Head is. It's a movie that I bought from Frank Vogel at Cinema Wasteland a few years ago. And it's basically about a guy that wears a mask. And he like kills hookers and porn actresses. It's really bad. <laughs> it's really not well made. And... Um, the best scene in the movie is um, when they're interviewing a porn actress, and it's like, and the, I think they're they're asking her like how much dick she can suck or something, and then she's like, "Oh, I could take a dick" or something like that, and then suddenly, just immediately, cuts to a scene of her just getting choked to death by Maskhead. So you have to, it sounds really vulgar, but it's, you kind of have to see that scene to understand the comedy of that. But it's really gross and not good, not well made, not like a Serbian film. So I don't recommend watching it, even though I just said that you have to see it. <laughs> <clears throat> For people like us who go out of their way to watch shit, you have to see it, I guess. If that's what you're saying. That's what I am 100% saying. Um, another scene, um, buddy is the, uh, fucking train's about to run us over. I don't know if you people can hear this train right now. We're running a train. We're running a train (laughs) right now, (laughs) right now in the studios and, um, Friday the 13th part two, I've learned an interesting tidbit about the sex scene. Um, these two teenagers obviously have sex shortly before they are kebobbed by Jason and there's no nudity in this scene, which is uncharacteristic for a Friday the 13th film. In a tidbit that I found out is it's because that the director found out that the girl they were shooting was 17 Ooh. shortly before they shot the scene. Before they so shot So they the didn't scene. even know that she was 17. They probably shot him a lot of scenes with her before that, thinking that she was of age thinking they were going to get some tits out of this girl later in uh, later in the production yeah. and then you know she's like I'm 17 sure enough so that's that's and interesting. they're not going to fucking blow their whole budget reshooting this movie so they just kind of had to roll with it yeah Is so that that's Miles' favorite sex scene of all time that's what we got from Miles so I'm not saying what Miles as a pedophile, but you know, <laughs> but I mean, hey, but I mean, hey, he's he said it, man. It's, that's you didn't say it. You're, you're, just repo- you're just reporting. Listen, it. man, seventeen year old girl, Miles. I'm not gonna go any further with this because there's some things people could say about me. Well, but, but, but when you when you put it in the scheme of things, this girl is probably like seventeen years older than Miles, like twenty something down the road. I mean, I don't. Fucking Let's know. see here. He probably saw it for the first time. Friday the 13th Part 2. That was probably like 1982, I want to say. The same. I think that rule was released the exact same day, I believe, that Blind Hate's uh, (laughs) debut demo dropped. So, speaking of Friday the 13th, how about that for a segue? I just watched the uh, The Friday Friday the 13th The Game trailer. What Uh, was with that music? In oh, the so they're going for like a really like the the company that's producing this game and everything like everything that they're doing they're making it look like it's an old VHS tape and everything not the game but right. you know like when it was popping up it's all staticky yeah. and stuff and playing like eighties music and so they did like the little eighties hair metal for the music for this trailer this so there's been gameplay released for this probably about two months ago. That I watched a little bit of, and it didn't look great, in my opinion. It looked <sighs> Jason's walking, you know, so somehow you have to catch up with these teenagers and stuff. So there's like a fast travel system where Jason just goes up in smoke and then just appears 
fucking Houdini? Like, yeah, what? so Jason's basically a fucking magician, you know what I mean? Just like... So I don't know. I mean, it's kind of assumed that Jason could teleport in the movies. Is this like an unlicensed... Like, is this like an indie game, or is this like a licensed... The production private? values seem kind of high for it being an indie game. But... Also, they seem kind of low, too. It's like somewhere... It's hard to in, tell. It's like in the middle ground there. It. I'm just questioning, because the new trailer didn't look like they improved anything from the gameplay that I saw two months ago. Do you play as Jason? It, it, or appears, do you... it appears that you play as Jason and that your goal is to Oh, yeah, you just said the instant transmission the, uh, shit. Yeah, other teenagers. yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. But there also appears, I kind of turned off one of the videos, it appears that there might be a game mode as well where you try to escape Jason. Because I know in the older games, you always played as the counselors, like the yeah. in the NES game and all that stuff. So With the blue which you have, Which you have... Do you have the the retro ass case for that? I don't have the game. Yeah, you have the case. I have the figure. Yeah. Oh, you have the figure. I have a figure that like. I thought that came with the. Oh, so that the actual game is not part of that set. No. Oh, okay. No. I got so. you. I thought it was like. A I almost big... bought that game for ten bucks off of a girl once. Yeah. Yeah, but. <sighs> I mean, <laughs> it's Friday the Thirteenth, the NES game, so I don't know. But anyways, the trailer looked... Uh, I'm wondering how they're going to make this not repetitive and kind of lame. So I'm interested because I'm a fan of the series, but whatever. Right, I feel you. Yeah. So anyways, we got a request to talk about CM Punk. Who will be making his UFC debut this Saturday? This Saturday at UFC 203. I will be attending live because it's in Cleveland, my backyard. I will not be attending live because Jared did not invite me. Well, I mean, you didn't want to spend $200 on a ticket. Yeah, probably so, not. Um, I'm a huge CM Punk fan, so I wanted to see his first fight. And it'll be weird because I was actually live in attendance at CM Punk's last. WWE appearance as well. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Pittsburgh Royal Rumble was the last time CM Punk made an appearance for WWE. He, I mean, he went there, but he never made it out of backstage. You know, so he wasn't on TV ever again or anything. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. So all that, but... Um, who's he fighting? Do you look uh, up who he's fighting? Gal is the his name, last name. The name is escaping me, but... Um, yeah, if you want to keep talking, I will look that up. So I know that this guy is 2-0 and in UFC. And um, I don't know. I read some of, some of their conference call or whatever that they just had. Mickey Gall. Mickey Gall. Yeah, I remember that now. And um, they didn't really seem to... Uh, they're not really selling this fight as like a personal feud or anything. They seem to have some respect for each other and... Uh, I'm pulling for CM Punk. I think all of us are pulling for C except for actually I saw a YouTube video today. Um and I believe the title of the video was just called Why CM Punk Should Lose His Debut. And it was just uh it was on one of the What Culture sites and they were just should, should lose as if someone's booking this. I I I'll, I can look up the actual title. Basically the video was just about how UFC is a legitimate sport and how it's not a good idea to have someone because basically they think he's going to like fight a, like one or two matches. Then he's going to be like Brock and get his title shot. Like it's not going to be done like the legitimate way, like fighting through the ranks. It's going to be done through like box office dollars. If well, he's will. already in UFC and his first match is a pay-per-view fight instead of like a fight night or whatever. So he's already pretty high up on there. You know what I mean? So he's already being afforded opportunities that fighters, even just starting in the UFC, wouldn't be afforded unless they had a huge reputation coming in to the uh, it's called UFC. It's called Why CM Punk Needs to Lose His UFC Debut. And it's got almost a thousand thumbs down. <laughs> so, so that's the thing. Um, but yeah. Well, What Culture does a lot of wrestling videos, so... Well, they debuted a new... They have, like... Four or five different channels. One of them is about wrestling, and they also have an MMA one. 
Um, so that's where this particular... Oh, it was on the MMA one? Yes. Okay, so... I don't know. what you do? Jared, by the way, for those of you that don't know, Jared always has something in his hands or is fucking doing something ridiculous over there. So I think he just spilled something on himself. Listen, so CM Punk, Mickey Gow, <laughs> anyway. this Saturday, I will be live in attendance. Hopefully Punk pulls through. Um, they've been shooting a documentary that I haven't uh, watched yet that's basically going through like Punk's training and preparation for this fight. So, and you've met CM Punk. I've met CM Punk. Maybe I'll meet him again. Do you have his phone number? I can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> that I have CM Punk's phone number. So, I'll write it down for you and then you can text him later. Okay. Oh, um, one newsworthy thing with CM Punk, though, is that apparently Vince McMahon is suing him. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, is it because he's using the name? I don't know. I have no idea what the lawsuit's about. Or he didn't really say. There was just an interview where a guy asked him if McMahon has like texted him to like encourage him or say good luck or anything. And Punk said no. <laughs> Basically said that he's like bankrolling to sue him right now. And then that was it. Because so. does dub, do they own? Is he wrestling as CM Punk or is he wrestling? Yeah, he's as fighting Phil? as CM Punk. Okay, so my th- I don't know I if don't WWE know. has any. Ownership of that name, though, because Punk was wrestling under that name before he even got to WWE. Oh, then maybe. So, I don't anyways, know. he was wrestling under that name before he res- wrestled like for anybody, really. Like he wrestled. But there under, might be. There might he's be wrestled some under clause. that name since like backyard wrestling days. So. Well, then maybe that's a not name true. he came up with himself, and um, really, actually. He lies about it in interviews a lot because people ask him what the CM stands for. It actually stands for Chick Magnet because he started off in a tag team called the Chick Magnets and he was CM Punk and the other guy was CM something else. But. <laughs> so, yeah, CM Punk. Um, Shout out to um, the person who told us to talk about CM Punk. It's thanks for listening. Keep listening. And I'll, I'll comment. Also- Comment. With your all-time favorite sex scene, Comment and maybe we'll all- talk about it next week. I think that we should do a weekly segment where yeah. it's like we watch we, a movie we, we, that we know for sure has a sex scene in it, <laughs> and then so we'll talk about the sex we t- scene. T- until we get a steady- At least for September. We'll call it Sextember. Sextember. All right, we're Sextember. doing it. Sextember. Sextember. It's I'll official. Be- Sextember is underway. <laughs> I can't wait for Sextember's 2017, because we'll have like a whole year just building up to Sextember. I'm excited. <laughs> but yeah, leave us a comment, your favorite sex scene. Uh, we'll talk some more about next week. Um, maybe next week could be the worst sex scene you've ever seen. Instead of the what best. defines a terrible sex scene to you? That could be a question. Leave it in the... Tell us in because, the comments. Because, I mean, obviously my favorite sex scene is, is Terminator 1. It's not technically 1. good. Yeah, there's no nudity. The room is not a good sex scene. Like, it looks like he's fucking her belly button. Not a good sex scene. <laughs> So it just looks like one of those late night HBO, like softcore porns that they do. Like it seriously looks like it's hum- she. He is humping her belly button. Do you see any dick? No, you see, you see Tommy Wiseau's aging wrinkled ass though. All right, good. Um, it's yeah. I yeah. don't. I, it's, I don't. I, there are no words. There are no words. Yeah. Um, Godzilla. Um, the new Godzilla movie that Toho just produced. Godzilla Resurgence, or as it's known in Japan, is like Shin Godzilla, I believe, is what it's called. Shin Godzilla! Yeah, Godzilla! Shin Godzilla! I've been working on my Japanese accent. Speaking of... And it may be partially blamed for this sore throat that I have. Partially? Speaking of accents and stuff, we also got another comment on our YouTube video. I don't know if you knew about this. But they really liked my James impression. They said it was one of the most accurate they've heard. You did an impression? Yeah, well, when we when you were like doing when we were we were talking about Metallica last week. Oh, I must have been asleep. You were here. I remember. <laughs> you just said James. I was very uh, vaguely oh. James Rolf or James. Oh, okay. I, I didn't say Headfield. Okay. Yeah, James Headfield. But when I was just like, yeah or whatever Whoa, I did. Whoa, yeah. 
He's like, ooh. <laughs> I, I guess it is pretty accurate. I don't know. Let me know if I suck ass in the comments, whatever. Um, Godzilla Resurgence. Godzilla Resurgence. October 11th. I do not have a good Godzilla impression. But uh, we're going to go see it and we'll... We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. <coughs> we'll definitely talk about it. For those of you that also don't know, Jared's dog looks exactly like fucking Godzilla. Um, I watched a movie last night called The Legend of Gator Face. The Legend... <laughs> And my dog looks exactly like fucking Gator, <laughs> Gator Face, Face. <laughs> my friend. So, for those of you out there, this is supposed to be a kid's movie, by the way. And they're talking about tallywhackers and smoking bog grass and stuff like that. It's a... For kids. Th- this, this, there's a character in this movie that I relate to on a personal level. Because this guy claims that he saw Gator Face and the first thing the other guy wants to know is if you saw his tallywhacker. <laughs> it's, it's definitely the question I would ask first off. Um, there's another scene where the kid claims that he kicked Gator Face in the balls and the first question the guy asks is Gator Face has balls? These are all questions that I would ask. This is When I found this tape, these are questions I was asking myself as I walked up to the checkout at Goodwill. Like, will I find out if Gator Face has a dick? Does Gator Face have balls? I still didn't so, know by the end of the movie. I I've still never know. heard of this Gator Face. I'll show you the tape when we go inside. I will not watch the movie again. Do you think this is something that is lost on VHS? Potentially. Potentially. You should check it out on your... Uh, I will check it out. On um, your cellular device. My cellular. Um, yeah. That would be pretty good for us if it was lost on VHS be beneficial sneak because it'd be good it'd be good to uh, coming soon to youtube's near you wrestling news buddy wrestling kevin fucking owens kevin fucking owens Se- how many smarks are sucking triple h's dick right now okay second week in a row everyone thinks that people are going off script because everyone thought that fucking triple h came out and it wasn't planned but what you didn't hear about Pe- this. People Pe- thought that this was a shoot. People, because th- <laughs> everyone people thought that Triple H interfering in this match was a shoot. Yes, people. Well, yeah, Seth Rollins just sold the pedigree. You know what I mean? And, they, and took the three count, even though he was supposed to go over. Everyone was like, "Fucking Seth was supposed to win." Stephanie knew and Mick knew, and fucking Triple H came out of nowhere. They thought he was doing it for Seth. This was a work. People, this is quite obviously a work. Who said this? I want names. I, I, no one I know personally. Good. Because if people you know personally well, no one, are no that one, fucking stupid, no one I, I know, would urge you to stop associating with them immediately. You are the I only need person your brain I know. Cells. You're the only person I know and talk to that watches wrestling besides like Al. Did so, Al think this was a shoot? Al only watches the pay-per-views, I believe. So, Yeah. Well, listen, and I'm extremely you. happy. I didn't see it coming. I'll be we complete. called it the week before. We called it that KO potentially could be walking out of there the champ. Oh, man, I didn't really believe it. We didn't believe it, but we called it. We were, it you was heard a possibility. It, you, it was more you, likely the big cast. You heard it here first. But whatever, man. Kevin Owens is the champion. I'm really excited. And... um Congratulations to Kevin Owens. Uh, nothing crazy on SmackDown this week. I didn't fucking watch wrestling this week at all. I was on. We did night shoots this week, so busy man, Buddy Candela. Busy man, Buddy the Bruiser Candela. Shouts out to Kevin Owens. Hell of a match on Monday. Hell of an interference from Triple H. Coming back from the fucking dead. <laughs> we have a lot of uh, questions to be answered about this angle. But, we, we, you know, those are... Are, are you expecting a face turn from Seth Rollins and a potential feud? Well, obviously there's going to be a feud, but what do you what do you think is going to come out of this? Someone's going to turn face. It's not going to be Triple H. I don't know if it's Triple H or Seth Rollins, but, you know, Seth... Triple H really helped put over a, a heel against a heel, but... <coughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe a Seth Rollins face turn. 
it's it's gonna be strange but uh we'll see what happens um but yeah that's really all i have for this week this is a short fucking episode good we've been kind of aiming to get shorter we have um so, i don't know hey tweet us your favorite sex scenes or comment in the video with your favorite sex scenes below it's sex timber sex and we are horny as fuck and we are trying <laughs> to watch these also if you're are if you're a cute girl from the rap party from my friend Dahmer <laughs> Hey, hit me up on Twitter. Slide into my DMs. I am single as fuck. So, I don't mean to put my business out there, but you know what I mean. A guy's got to do... I'm going to be watching all these sex scenes. I'm going to need some sort of relief somewhere outside of the studio. (laughs) If you know what I'm saying. Goddamn. So, anyways... This oh. is Dynamite Jared signing off, I you're, guess. You're signing off already? I'm si- you're, 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 you're fucking... Do you have anything for me, buddy? I don't know, man. My throat hurts, motherfucker. What else do you want to talk about next week? Besides... Let's sex, go see Don't sex. Breathe. Let's see Don't Breathe. Yeah. We could do that. And we... um, I think that... See, now that I have time off, we can, we do, can, go stu- see we can do stuff. Yeah, we yeah. can be friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. So next week, don't breathe. Don't breathe. The sex scene of the week. We'll figure out what that is. Um. Yeah, we'll fucking put it on Twitter. We'll ask you guys what you, what you think. Um. Yeah, I got nothing else. It's late as fuck. Um. And I'm hungry. And you're hungry. I'm starving. I think we're all. I had fucking Taco Bell last night at like four thirty in the morning. Fucked me right up, bro. It's bad shit. Taco Bell will do that to you, man. I probably shit like four times today just yeah. from like consistent Taco Bell eating over the course of the past few years. Goddamn. So anyways, <laughs> on that note, Dynamite Jared signing the fuck off. And Buddy the Bruiser signing off. Short episode. We'll see you next week, guys. Take care. Take care.